As children, most of us were admonished to be good. Mom would let her son or me go to the neighborhood's house to play, and the last word she would say was, be good, son. Now, if Dad said it, it would be more like, be good, boy, or else. But have you ever given any real serious thought to this thing of being good? Why is it that we have to teach our children to be good? As a general rule, no one has to teach their little ones to be bad because we are, they are very capable of doing that on their own. And, and before you come and get me and strangle me, let me give you my perspective. I have two of the best kids in the world. They're both adults now. And I have eight of the most wonderful and fun and wild grandkids that anyone can have. But listen, we didn't have to teach any of them to be selfish, self-centered, or how to say this famous word, mine. That is the most natural thing that children will say. Why is that? Well, the truth is, since the first man and woman, we'll call them Adam and Eve, disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden, we live in and are a part of the fallen world, and we ourselves are fallen creatures. We are fallen creatures living in a fallen world, and in our fallenness, our tendency is not toward goodness. Conversely, as much as we like, and as much as we might even hate to hear it, we are prone toward evil. This is the very reason that addiction and immorality and selfishness and self-centeredness are all such problems with us. It is why we tend to gravitate toward what we don't want to do and to say what we'd rather not say. Now, before you feel like that I am casting a load on us, don't feel too bad about what I've just said because Paul wrote these words to the Romans in chapter 7 of Romans. For I do not do the good that I want to do, but I practice the evil that I do not want to do. And candidly, he was confessing his momentary weakness as a man. But Paul had discovered a secret. He could be just as bad as the next person. Think about it. Before he met Jesus, he persecuted and killed those who followed Christ. But when he met Jesus, his badness or his evil ways were changed, although he was still pulled in the ways of evil. But you read when you read the life of Paul, you understand that Jesus and a life makes a difference. He begins where we are in life, which is generally not so good. And then he takes us or literally transports us to where he wants us to be. You see, being good or arriving at goodness on your own will wear you out. In fact, it's impossible to achieve the goodness of God in your own strength. But for the one who trusts Christ, he has given the strength and the wherewithal, if you will, to achieve goodness. In fact, the Bible says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, and goodness. It is the gift of God, and it is the fruit of a godly life, and fruit of your life can only be enjoyed by others. Candidly, our world needs goodness. Now, not just the good old boy syndrome who goes alone to get alone, but rather the goodness that begins deep inside and is always seen putting others first, helping the hurting and lifting up the fallen. Sadly, today, many view goodness as a weakness, but that's a misconception. Goodness breeds strength, which gives birth to influence of the right kind. In our world, 
that is arguably sick. Let us offer the goodness that is only achieved through walking with Christ in our lives. Let me pray for us. Father, I pray that today that you will draw us to yourself so that you can create in us a goodness that we do not understand. Lord, today, this day, heal our heart and heal our land. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.